And then I kind of feel like scarred over sounds a little like callous. But, <laughs> yeah. and, but to some extent, uh, there is a part of me that's dead inside, mm-hmm. but is, it's probably a good thing. Uh, You've cauterized that part. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah like some things you're maybe too sensitive about and it's a... Uh, uh, I hate to say like sensitivity is a weakness. That sounds <laughs> yeah. very like macho. Um, but realizing like, uh, even like this would be a good example. I I brought something. A uh, I'm trying to think of how to how to phrase this without adding. I'll just uh, <laughs> I brought like a story time for kids to do at the camp out that we did, and um, because I I just like doing stuff, and I thought, oh, I want to work on my grandpa skills, like how to tell a good story around the campfire. And, you know, have little parts for all the kids. And it's like a good, nice story about helping people and, you know, nothing controversial or anything. And uh, I brought it up to several of the people like, hey, can we get this? Maybe get some volunteers. And it seemed like they're like, oh, we'll we'll do that later. You know, I asked a few times throughout and it seemed like people just weren't into it or they were busy. And I think years ago I would have gotten really discouraged about that. Of like, oh, I put all this time and effort and brought all these props and everything and... Uh, and they weren't even interested. And now it just being nothing personal, like they're busy. They're trying to keep their kids from dying in the wilderness, you know, mm. and, uh, you know, camping with kids is a lot. And it's, yeah, it's just nothing personal. And sometimes you've got to grow up and realize that it's not all about you. And so kind of cauterizing some of those personal offense and yeah, just giving like heart, a little harder harder self so where you're like maybe not like you could still be as sensitive but like not have it impact your life quite as much yeah and have a like almost like a realistic more realistic view a less romantic view of the thing uh, yeah because like you know you throw a birthday party and you know a quarter of the people you invited come you know, <laughs> oh darn <laughs> or like yeah we we'll just have a get together at your house and you have of 30 people you messaged in the green uh, only three of them say they're coming and then ends up none of them come. Yeah. Like, yeah, like this just happens, I guess. I mean, I wish it didn't. And maybe I could be the one that shows up, actually shows up to those things when somebody else throws it. Mm -hmm. Um, But like, it's not because people hate you necessarily. Yeah. Yeah, (laughs) It's most likely, unless you're a real (laughs) piece of work. Yeah. uh, It's not because people hate you. It's just life. Like everybody's living their own lives. Yeah. Because they don't take offense. That that sort of thing used to make me spiral, not in particular, because it would be related to community, like wanting to do things that would build off into community and then it just not working and uh, and being like, what's the point of doing any of this? And then I just get like in this big depression hole because I I was naturally happy. Until I started thinking about, oh, <laughs> and so that's why I stopped thinking about things, and now I'm really happy. That's why they say ignorance is bliss. Well, that's why you're so blissful all the time. Yeah, right? life's pretty okay. Yeah, I'm not. 